back. As the economy faces trouble with slower growth and other concerns, the Prime Minister has set up an economic advisory council that's headed by Bibek Debroy and one of its members is economist Surjit Bhalla who's here in the studio with us uh, to talk about uh, what he thinks is the fix for the economy. Dr. Bhalla, congratulations firstly for being Thanks. on this panel which hasn't met yet. So here you are telling us what you think can be fixed. Let me first ask you though, uh, there was an economic panel that was set up earlier as well under the last government. Mrs. Yeah. Mr. Rangarajan was there. In fact, he's spoken to us today and that kind of, you know, withered away. Uh, I hope that there's no fear you have that well, this will not be taken seriously beyond a point. The previous one uh, lasted for 10 years. I mean, it, with each term of the government and Did was first headed by Suresh Tendulkar, then headed by Rangarajan. Um, and the new government came in in 2014 didn't think uh, to start it then but they've started now so so you think hopefully that, that they're going to listen to what you have to say there's been a lot of reports uh, even even in the last 24 hours uh, critical that the you know that, that the prime minister doesn't want to listen to opinions that he doesn't want to take the advice or input of economists you were on this program the other day saying you felt it was the very opposite yeah. uh, and why why did you feel that well, I, you know, Based look, on your <coughs> um, and that was before I got appointed, <laughs> yeah, that's and true. if you will, on several other occasions over the last three years. Um, you know, I happen to think that the, and I've tried to document, not just think, uh, I've tried to document that there have been more economic reforms in the last three years under uh, this government than ever. Uh, basically, the form, there weren't, when we say ever, we really didn't have reforms prior to 1991. Um, and then we had significant reforms on the trade side. The Indian economy was opened up to the world, and that was mega. That was big. That was huge. After that, it was basically, if you will, refinements along the lines of what had already happened. Um, and until this present government came along, and I think they have, you know. So you're saying from 1991? From 1991 to 2014. to 2014 were, if you will, a set of reforms. Some positive, some actually quite negative. 2014 to 2017, the economic reforms, in my view, have all been positive. We can argue as to whether they should have moved faster, but I think the evidence, history will judge, and I think will judge, as I'm saying, that there were mega reforms so in why the are last we looking at that graphic okay you know yeah. uh, can we just go back to the to the yeah. gdp <coughs> graphic please because as you were talking about that we just had look at the slowdown right mm -hmm. and again can we please go back to that gdp graphic uh, to 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 give a sense of how things have just slid uh, you know over a period of time why okay. has that happened now this is something that uh, you know <coughs> basically everybody has noted so first we i've tried to try to assert try to document that economic reforms of the last three years have been tremendous. So therefore, an argument that the Prime Minister was not listening or the Finance Minister was not listening to reforms, I think, is inaccurate. Now we come to the rather interesting uh, point that basically we have reached a growth rate of 5.7%. Uh, how did this happen? Uh, and 5.7% from my vantage point and my analysis is, is very low. Our but potential GDP growth it's is anywhere low. above seven and a half. So we are two percentage points below, uh, and this is with good weather. So we can't attribute it to the weather as we normally have. Is it technical? To. So is something it, went wrong. Sorry. Is it technical? Um, well, I don't want to use the term technical, but I don't think it's technical. I think it's structural. Uh, something went wrong. All I'm trying to say is the facts are something has gone wrong. Now, one immediate correlation that people make, aha, something went wrong now in the second quarter of 2017, and what is it that has happened over the last year? Demonetization. So they say, and what I call lazy economics, we had demonetization, we had a slowdown, the two are connected and connected completely. <coughs> and you don't that think is, that's the case? Sorry? You don't think that's the case? Because I according to you, it's not like only what do some... I not think that is yeah. the case. Yeah. I've tried to document that that is not the case. How do we try? So what I'm saying is we should study that. You agree. We should try and establish whether it is demonetization or something else. Demonetization is certainly a proximate cause, but we have to establish as economists 
we are, or as political scientists, or as journalists, we have to establish that one led to the other. Well, Dr. And Dr. Rangarajan there, was one, the one, yeah. Last point. Yeah. The slowdown that you are correctly observing in that graphics started well before demonetization. So therefore, we can't so attribute we, to demonetization. No, but then should we have done demonetization is the question. When we knew oh. that the economy was slow. And now, this, is, this is a different question because when the Prime Minister did it, he said this was a healthy body. You can do surgery on a healthy body. So yeah. obviously, we weren't that healthy and we still did it. And therefore, today, Dr. Rangarajan, who was the chief of the last uh, advisory panel, he said he believes the cash ban and uh, GST reduced D GDP growth by 1% in all. Mm -hmm. So was it wise to do that note ban then? Okay. Look, <clears throat> as demonetization happened on November 8th, and I'm sure in the two or three weeks following that, I was on your show saying that how will demonetization, how will we measure the success or failure of demonetization? And I was one of the very few who said, do not look at it in terms of how much cash got returned, but look at it in terms of how much increase in tax compliance demonetization will bring about. But that, that was already happening even before demonetization. No, no, no. Mind you, absolutely happening before. And I'll document what was happening before. It's the increase. Look, in the US, starting from 2006, the IRS publishes this data. Out of every hundred dollars that the government should collect in personal income tax revenues, in the US they collect 82. In India, out of every hundred rupees that you should collect in tax revenues, we collect only 25. Yeah. So that therefore, the when you say yeah. it's been, and mind you, it's been that way for a decade. But what's so the therefore, si one yeah. second, hmm. therefore you can't say it's already going up. It's the number of tax payers is going up, but not the amount collected per taxpayer Even or per negligible. relevant to income. It, I, I mean, I would just argue that that's negligible. At that's the what? End of, the number of taxpayers is still negligible compared to what it should be. Was it worth no, the no. grief so that therefore, people went through? Which is a separate question. But I want to ask you, because we have just a couple of minutes left. You have argued that you believe it, the onus is on the RBI to fix the economy more than it is on the no, government. I have not said that the onus is on the RBI, but what I've accurately said is that if we are trying to decipher what led to the slowdown, then the RBI falling behind in cutting rates is the major elephant in the room, is the first amongst equals in the causes. It's not the only cause, but it is the major cause for the slowdown. Therefore, a, a necessary condition for us to get back to normal, a necessary condition for us to get back to normal is that interest rates have to be cut. And obviously, some other things should also happen. Like what? I mean, oh. you're saying cut interest rates, that's there fine. What are the two so other many, things? There are so many. There is obviously something that all of us are concerned with is the, uh, if you will, NPAs of the banks. Uh, I believe, and this was written about a year ago, that <coughs> the tax rates have to be cut. Uh, the big difference between us and, let us say, Bangladesh in terms of exporting is that in Bangladesh, out of every 100 rupees that a firm makes, it makes 60 rupees as profit and 40 rupees goes outside. In India, out of every 100 rupees that the firm makes, one of the highest in the world, 72 rupees goes in taxes and other payments. And then, yeah. So, it's you know, we tax the hell out of our corporates, we tax the hell out of our firms, and we say, listen, why aren't they growing? Why aren't they investing? So you believe the three things that can actually get the economy back on track is cutting interest rates, that's for the RBI to do, taking care of the NPAs of banks, and cutting tax rates for corporates. Cutting tax rates. These are three big. And then in agriculture, we need to open up. The government constantly is intervening, every government. This government doing less than others, but we don't want to be intervening in, okay, stop this export, stop this import, etc. We should let the market be in agriculture and try and solve the distribution problem, which may or may not arise through income transfers, which is another reform that this government has actively undertaken, is direct cash transfers. I completely believe we should get away from food subsidies that we have and replace them with direct cash transfers which is something, another reform that this government has undertaken, and it isn't complete as yet, but history will remember that these three years have so you give seen the biggest set of economic reforms. As, as someone who is, is a keen political observer as well, my final question to you is, 
Do you believe that the next general election will essentially be fought on the economy, on jobs? I think it will be a very important part, but I, you know, as a political commentator, as a political junkie, if you will, um, I think the economy is an important component, perhaps less so this time than others, but clearly uh, it, it can tilt component? the scales. It can tilt the scales. So okay. to get the economy back uh, is not just a political responsibility, it's a moral responsibility for the government to try and get the economy back on the track. All right, Dr. Sajid Bala, all the very best in this new role. Thank you so much for coming in and joining us today. That's yeah. it on the show tonight. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye.